If you have this style of candle with the lid, you're gonna love one of today's DIYs. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Let's get into these budget-friendly DIYs. For this DIY, you'll wanna grab yourself one of these kind of candles. Now the key here is that the candle has this type of lid. You can pick up this style of candle from a lot of places. This is one that I had in my stash, but you can grab them from Bath & Body Works, Walmart, Target, where have you. Size is up to you, but I kinda like this big size. So find one of these candles, take off the label and what we want to do is paint it white now I did go ahead and use some Waverly white chalk paint if you want to go a little bit faster route maybe get a little bit quicker process here is I would just take some painters tape and gently tape off the inside of the jar flip it upside down and then you could take it outside and spray paint it white I ended up painting three coats of the white paint on my candle for the lid, you wanna grab some brown paint, kind of a darkish color. Chances are this is not actually gonna show up in the DIY. This is kind of just a kind of extra precautionary step here because we are gonna be putting something on top of this brown paint. So just paint around the edge of the lid a little bit on the top as well. The next step in this DIY is to grab some tan Sculpey clay. Now it doesn't have to be tan. This is just kind of to make it easier on me. You definitely could use a white clay and paint it, but you're gonna end up needing a total of four packages of this. You want to roll it out and make it into a square. You're gonna need two squares. So what I ended up doing to make sure my squares were kind of comparable is after I rolled it out, I just took a piece of cardboard and cut the size of the square based on the lid. So this is gonna be graham crackers. If you don't know where this DIY is going, we're making that candle into a really cute s'more. So you're gonna roll this out and you wanna make sure that the squares are gonna fit on top of your candle. So definitely use that lid as a guide on the size and then cut your two squares. Now we need to make them look a little bit more like a graham cracker. Now, one of them, honestly, you can just leave plain. That is what I did because you're not really gonna see it and it's gonna be on the bottom. The other one, you want to, down the middle of it, add your dashes and then, of course, add your little dots. I'm just using random tools that I have. Once that was done, this is what it looks like. Then it's time to bake. So I stuck them in my oven at 280 degrees and baked them for about 20 minutes, turned off my oven and let them cool completely in the oven. I wanted to add a little bit more of a kind of golden color to my graham crackers. So I grabbed a makeup sponge and mixed a light tan and then kind of a caramelly color paint and just sponged that all on this piece, which is the bottom piece. And then I also sponged it up on the top part of the graham cracker as well. For this step, I wasn't quite sure how to approach it. I had two ideas and the way I started was I grabbed the lid to the candle and I started with some of that brown hot glue and I started to work around just the edge. After I started doing this, I quickly realized, okay, this isn't working. So I need to go with the other plan, which was to attach the lid first before I added the brown hot glue. So I used some Gorilla Glue, put it on my candle lid, stuck that top graham cracker piece, the one with the little dots and dashes, then went back in with my brown hot glue and started adding a layer. I went all the way around with that layer and then let that cool down. While that was cooling down, I grabbed my candle and wanted it to look a little toasty. So I grabbed those same paints and a sponge and just kind of stamped on it to give it, you know, a toasted marshmallow look. When that was completed, I took some more of that Gorilla Glue and glued the white candle to the bottom graham cracker and put my lid on top. From here, I wanted the chocolate to be drippy. So I kind of just very slowly went around adding more hot glue. It got a little messy, but the trick I figured out was I squirted a little bit of hot glue as it started to drip down. I just used the tip of my glue gun and I'm sorry I didn't get a shot of me doing this uh, that, from an angle that you could actually see, but all I did was just, and I just kind of pulled the little drip up. It would drip down a little bit. I kind of pulled the drip up and that was the process. And I absolutely love how this project turned out. Thank you. 
You might recognize these pumpkins if you saw my fall compilation video. I will make sure to link that down below in the description box, along with all the stuff in today's video that I'm using. But this was for a pumpkin garland from the Dollar Tree Plus section. And I made some really cute candlesticks last year in that video. And these were the leftover pumpkins. So I thought, let's kind of make a part two to kind of complement those candlesticks. We're gonna make some votive holders. This is a very simple, literally five minute DIY. Grab your little pumpkins. You wanna grab your battery operated votive, trace around it, and then just use a hobby knife to carve out the inside of your pumpkin. And then you just wanna slip these in here. Now you could grab any color candle that you want. Um, you could definitely add some little bows to this if you wanted to add some greenery if you wanted to, but I kinda like the simplicity of it. I just set it on a cutting board that I got on clearance from Hobby Lobby. I added a little bow and I think this is great. You could definitely make a several of these and scatter them about on your dining room table, but a great little piece, especially to complement those candlesticks that I made last year. Let's make a pretty candle holder with some fall leaves. You wanna grab some type of vase or jar glass thing that you got laying around. This is what I had and some fake leaves. Now Dollar Tree does sell bigger fake leaves. I've seen those there. I happen to have this pack from Hobby Lobby. I like the mini size of them. It worked better with my jar. So what I decided to do was at first I thought, um, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to put them on here. And you guys know I like to keep it real here. And so the, my first attempt here was to just kind of put them on with some Mod Podge, but it just wasn't going well. It wasn't, it just wasn't working out because the leaves weren't exactly flat and they weren't wanting to whatever. And I just, you know what, I lost patience. That's just the honest truth, I lost patience. So what I ended up doing was I came up with a pattern and I started by hot gluing them along the bottom of the jar. And then from there, I just kind of did a row up with each color. And I just used hot glue to tack each of the leaves on until I got the jar completely covered. At the top, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to add a ribbon or not because it kind of had that weird little lip thing going on up there. But what I ended up doing was just going ahead and put a row of leaves up there. And I actually like how it looks because it kind of gave this whole cool texture at the top with the tips of the leaves. To finish it off, I just grabbed some jute twine, tied a little bow around the center of the candle holder. And I absolutely love the fall vibes that it gives off, especially at night. We are gonna make some extremely affordable fall luminaries now. So what you need for this is some wax paper and you could go crazy with this and make a table full of fall luminaries for so cheap. You could put them on your mantle, lots of options here. You're gonna need two pieces of wax paper. And again, I am using those mini fall leaves, but you could grab any kind of leaf that you want. You could even grab real leaves if you wanted to, totally up to you. And all you have to do is take your wax paper, make sure you trim it down to the size that you want it, and you're gonna start placing your leaves down on one of the pieces of wax paper. Once you get that done, you're going to take the other piece of wax paper and you want to press the two pieces together. They will stick. I used just my mini heat press to get that done. And once you get it all nice and pressed, then all you have to do is just kind of wrap it in a cylinder. And I just used hot glue to close off the seal. And that's it. You could slip this over a vase, um, especially if you didn't want to make a permanent fall vase. You could make luminaries for all kinds of different seasons. Just slip this over there. Or you could just set these as is. I love when you heat press the wax paper because it gives it kind of a frosted glass look. And then you've got these gorgeous leaves mixed in.
time to make a fun apple cider candle. So I picked up this mug. It was on clearance. I think it ended up being like 50 cents or something crazy like that from Hobby Lobby, but you can pick up any kind of glass that you want. I also picked up this pack of wax melts. I'm going to be using the brown colored ones. I stuck them in a glass ramekin and then put them in a saucepan that had some water and I melted those wax melts down. While they were melting down, I did stick a wick down into my cup. I had these wicks, but if you don't have that, you could easily grab a candle that is brown colored from Dollar Tree and just reuse the wick if you wanted to. That's totally going to work as well. Once you get it melted down, you're going to pour it into your cup. Now, I was too busy, like, not paying attention to what I was doing. I was watching a movie at the same time. This is kind of what happened when I did that. Oh, dang it. Now I smelled it everywhere. Shasty. Okay. All right, not my best moments, but that's okay. And there you have it. I am a regular crafter, just like you. I have no problem showing my mistakes because trust me, I have plenty of them. So what I did is grab a wick holder and I placed that on the mug and wasn't worried about the cup being a hot mess. I cleaned the office, clean that up later. Set the candle aside and then I wanted to make, I believe they're called mug huggers. So I grabbed three different colors of clay, red, green, and brown, and I wanted to make a little apple out of the clay that can rest on the side of the mug. So I started just to shape it, do the best that I could to make sure that this apple would fit, making sure that I kind of cut and carved out a little uh, slot at the bottom of the apple so that it will be able to sit on the mug. The last decision you need to make here is whether or not you want to put some kind of sticker or decal on the mug. I left mine plain. I thought about Courtney Cider Co, but just left it plain. And then my last tip here is I would totally recommend removing the mug hugger if you're actually going to light this candle because nobody wants to start a fire but i love how this turned out i think it's super cute Grab one of these styrofoam pumpkins and a candle, a pillar candle. You want to trace around the base of the candle onto the pumpkin and then carve that out. Once you get that done, I did feel that this can this pumpkin, sorry, was a little bright, so I did add some darker orange to it. I added a little brown to it. And then all you have to do is grab some florals. I'm using all Dollar Tree florals. Just stick them wherever you want them to go. You can add a bow if you wanted to. The candles I'm using, it was a three pack from Amazon. I really do like these because they have a whole flicker thing. They're battery operated, which makes it great if you can't have candles at work or if you just don't do candle scents or you know if you're a teacher maybe and you want to decorate. But this is a very cheap option to make several of these as centerpieces for your fall decor, your mantles, but I absolutely love the simplicity of it and it's a very easy DIY to do. That wraps up another round of DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite or maybe one that you are planning on recreating. Also, let me know this. I am looking for some what I call hokey scary movies. I have seen a lot, but if you found one lately in the last year on a streaming service and have a recommendation for a movie, I would love to know it because I definitely need to add some more to my watch list. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.